pet bluegill fish in American style. The way it was done back around 1860, 70. Your grandpa used to fish like that. No fancy tackle, just plain pole and bobber. If your grandpa happened to live in Cuckoo, just over those hills, might be he went fishing sometimes with Will Norris there and his son Ted. Everybody knew Will Norris. He was a good fisherman and a good father. And though you'd never guess it to see him in his shirt sleeves like that, he was a mighty good minister too. Yes, sir, he was pastor of the Cooperville Memorial Church and a mighty fine minister. That is, most folks thought so. But after one June day, some people got to wondering what kind of a man Will Norris really was. Because it turned out he had some pretty strange ideas. Even his boy who worshipped him finally got to wondering. Because for the first time in young Ted's life, something happened to separate him. And things looked pretty dark. something in a hurry. Slasher can't stand up to him much longer. He'll never stop running. You've been blown so hard about the Slasher, why don't he fight? I don't blow. I bet. So do I. Against the Slasher. I don't think your dog likes to fight. Something he likes a lot less. Flasher! Fight, Flasher! Flasher! You can find when you got ready. Give him the bell, kid. We can see. Call your dog off. Sam. The winner in tonight's main bout in 22 minutes, the Slasher, who will stand any night to all challengers of any weight or age. Ain't he something? A little more experience, and he's gonna bring us a bag full of this. Experience isn't what he needs. Well, it ain't courage, Kit. There's no yellow in him. It's something else makes him slow to close in like he was tonight. It's a bad memory. He just don't remember good. He almost forgot what happens if I have to say fight twice. Fight, Slasher! He needs a little reminding. Like these guys. I said, bring them in. You stay here, son. I am 
Yeah, sure. Sure. Try to understand this. The Slasher's a, a dumb animal, and dumb animals don't have feelings like us humans. Honest? Sure. Oh, Spike, cage him. And maybe you better put some salve on him, too. your breakfast anymore. Kid got the milk. Yeah, it looks like Jim doesn't like to drink the light out of the pan either. It does look that way. But you know what I think's really wrong? What? I don't think he knows it's milk. The way I see it, he still thinks that milk comes from nanny goats. It's up to us to teach him that it comes from pans, too. Must be I scared him pushing his nose in so sudden. You think so, Dad? Well, if that's it, all you gotta do is to show him we're trying to help him, not hurt him. Whoa, easy, Ted. If you want to get his confidence, just move slowly. Isn't that right, Timmy? Sure. <laughs> Timmy's just like any other frightened animal when it comes to that. Don't be in a hurry. Don't make any sudden move. And speak very softly. So. And the first thing you know, he trusts you and will take a chance on whatever you want him to do. But we want to keep your confidence. Hey, Timmy? Hey. So this time, we'll try it right here by your mother, where you feel safe. Now, Maggie, we're not going to hurt your baby. First, we'll smear a little on his nose so he can taste it, see that it's milk. Then we show him this is the same stuff that's in the pan. We're not gonna hurt your baby. How's that? There you are. got into them. Something were, must have scared Maggie. You were talking real soft, Dad. I don't see what it could have been. Uh-oh. I do. Oh, do you, Mr. Norris? And what do you suppose your congregation would think if they could see you now? They'd probably think I should teach my wife not to scare goats. Uh, At least not when I have my Sunday trousers on. Oh, Will. They aren't your good ones. Now, Emily, they'll clean all right. Oh, don't rub, Will. That makes it worse. 
Ted, get some cold water. We've got to get your father cleaned up before church. Hurry. Linda. Linda. Fetch some clean dish towels, quickly. Oh, Will, those aren't your good trousers. I should have made you buy an extra pair instead of putting in this pump for me. The well was perfectly... Emily, I declare you're plain inconsiderate. To think you'd force me to buy another pair when you can see how much trouble one can bring. If I had two pair, I'd be so fretted by the responsibility, I'd probably neglect my congregation and be cast out to wander destitute with only those new trousers to comfort me. We'll be serious. You know you ought to look nice for church. Yes, ma'am. And hold still. Yes, ma'am. Ted, stop gorging yourself. Yes, Aunt Linda. Have you put the songbooks out? Not yet. Well, you better hurry. Yes, ma'am. What about Tim, Dad? When are we going to teach him? I think we'll have to wait till Maggie furnishes some more milk this evening. It's a woman's world, son. <laughs> you too. You think it was a stick? Now, boy, it's nothing but a pointer. Belongs on the desk. See? Let's be friends, huh? Come on, boy. You're bleeding. So that's the trouble, huh? Let me see where you're hurt. I can't help you if you do that. Ted! Ted Norris, you open this door. I can't. There's a dog in here. A dog in there. Ha, ha. Now listen, Jeannie. There's something wrong with this dog. He might get excited and hurt you, so go away. You stop your fibbing. And let me in this instant. For goodness sakes, Jeannie, quit hollering and banging. It's scaring him. I'll holler and bang until you let me in. Who's there? like a dog. And if you won't let me in, I'm coming in the window. Come on, boy. Come on. Ted! Oh, real quick. 
Emily, wait. Don't move. Don't talk. Keep talking, Ted. Sure, I'll keep talking. Won't I, boy? But I bet it's Ma's cookies will convince him. Anybody gives you Ma's cookies means nothing but good. Wait till you taste them. You'll see. See, what did I tell you? Gee, Dad, it worked out just the way you said it would. Will Norris, did you teach Ted to do that? Emily, I'm so proud it's sinful. He's a nice fellow, Ted. I think we better take care of him. Run fix up a place in the barn. And get some clean water, clean cloth, and arnica. There's not much time before church, Will. I think this is worth taking time for, Linda. sermon. Yes, we'll love it. Really very nice. Did you hear any of it? <laughs> Goodbye. Carson, darn good sermon. Made me feel darn good. See that you stay that way, Zeke. At least until next Sunday. <laughs> That's a darn good idea. This is marvelous sermon. Thank you. Hello, Senator. Hello, Carson. you and the family over for dinner Thursday, but, uh, What's wrong, Senator? Afraid of my appetite? It's my housekeeper. Anna's put on another 10 pounds, and until she loses some of it, we're all eating like sparrows. <laughs> I'll come to your rescue, Senator. You come over here. I was hoping you'd say that. You look fine, Miss Carson. Thank you, Mr. Norris. It's a handsome day, isn't it? Yes, indeed. Shame the whole service is indoor today. You've been pestering me all afternoon. Now quit it. I ain't gonna play until Dusty's leg and everything gets better. So that ends it. If you want to help, you can bring Maggie into the barn for milking. You and your nasty old animals. Is that what you're gonna call our new friend, Dusty? Well, yeah, Dad. I'd like to if you think it's all right. You don't think Dusty'd mind using his name again for another dog? I think Dusty'd be pleased to have you remember him that way. And I'm sure if this fellow had known our old Dusty, he'd be mighty pleased you think enough of him to call him that. He already knows his name, too, Dad. Watch. Gee, Dad, we're not going to keep him penned up, are we? Just for a little while, son. But why, Dad? Well, Dusty hasn't met Maggie and Tim yet. And I'm sure they get used to each other. Oh, oh, Maggie. Oh, easy, Maggie. You better quiet him, kid. Yes, sir. Bring it right back here. Yeah. You can see how it is. I think Maggie would be better satisfied if Dusty had a separate room for a while. And it might keep Dusty from doing something he'd be sorry for. When they're all friends, we'll take the gate down. What'd you and Tim have to raise such a fuss for? I bet it wasn't Dusty that scares you at all, huh, Maggie? I bet it was that old genie pulling and jerking you did it. That isn't so, Ted Norris, and you know it. That ugly old dog would scare anybody. Ugly? Look who's saying ugly. Compared to some girls, he's beautiful. Hi, old beautiful Dusty. See, he knows his name even. Here you are, Dusty, some milk for you. Atta boy, Dusty. Old beautiful Dusty. Beautiful? Huh. That mean dog. He's so mean he'll have to stay in a pen forever. 
Is that so? We'll just see about that. We'll just see. Tim's gonna love Dusty. You're gonna, aren't you, Tim? Because Dusty loves him. Go ahead, show her. Be friends. Kiss him, Dusty. Show him your friend. He'll eat him. That's what he'll do. Oh, no, he won't. Go ahead, show him. Be friends. Looky, looky. He's teaching Tim to eat out of a pan. Yeah. My goodness. Ain't he smart, though? Bob a little late, Linda? Yes. Bill was late lots of time. Emily, how old is Linda? Now, Will, stop that. Let me put the question in another way. Is your sister as old as you were when you proposed to me? Will! Linda. Linda. become quite adept at lighting pipes. A good wifely trait. But it'll never do you any good unless you become a wife, which of course calls for a husband. I presume you're referring to Bob Wilson? Is there someone else? Well, if it is Bob, time's running short. Your vacation is nearly over. And after all, you can't be coming out here every summer on the pretext of helping teach Sunday school. You'll just have to do something about it. Why don't you two tend to your own knitting? Do you want to marry him or don't you? Of course I do. Well, then I suggest a little quiet talk with your sister Emily. She caught me with my eyes wide open. Will! Well? Well? <laughs> well, it's true. I still don't see how, though. I certainly had no intention of proposing that night. But Emily suggested a walk by the river. There was a moon, and the mayflies were dancing on the water. And all it had the most peculiar effect on me. I can't explain it, but... I can. And it was a great help. I think it was Emily who first mentioned that she would soon be going back to the city. It was. And then just casually mentioned that although she would miss me, that there was someone else. <laughs> well, you're sweet. Why? To still believe there was someone else. Emily. There was no Harry Walker. Well, the romantic setting wasn't doing it, so you just had to have a rival. I'm sorry about Harry Walker, Will. I forgive you. What came next? I asked you to lift me onto a rock. No, it is. It was a great high one. And we were quite close together. Her cheeks were so rosy. I pinched them nearly raw. And she smelled so sweet. I squeezed rose petals all day. And when I lifted her onto the rock, I... I don't know what did it, but... That's what did it. Yes, I suppose so, now that I think of it. And just when I was beginning to think I'd have to use a club. <laughs> oh, I think they're both shameless. <clears throat> Who's shameless? Hello, Linda. Good evening, folks. Good evening. Hello, hello. Uh, you're late. Oh, believe me, I'm sorry I didn't get here sooner. You know, I'll bet that you were planning something that you didn't tell me about. Now I spoil it. Was she Will? Well, I... Will. I, uh... Excuse me. Nice moon. No, I'll bet it's lovely down by the river tonight. Why, even the 
air is filled with romance. What is that perfume? Rose petals? My cheeks are getting red enough without your help. You mean to say that you admit it? You admit that you'd connive behind a man's back? Even the man that you profess to love? That you'd stoop to trickery to get what you wanted? And then be brazen enough to admit it? All right, I, I admit it. What do you think of that? I think it's wonderful. You have all the qualities to make a perfect county attorney's wife. County attorney? Oh, Bob, you got it. Well, yes, but not without the help of my uncle, the revered senator. What difference does it make? You're there and, and you deserve it. What a beautiful ring. What's that for? The county attorney's wife. I'm sorry you had to work so hard and long for this. But until I got a decent start, I didn't think it was fair to ask you to take a chance. Aren't you taking a lot for granted, Mr. Wilson? After all, I haven't accepted you yet. Oh, yes, you have. I heard you. Ten minutes ago. You've got to ask me. Ask me. Beautifully lovely proposal. Good morning, sir. It's a fine day. Morning, Bob. Congratulations. Who told you? Why, well, it's all over town. Does my uncle know? He ought to. He had a sign hung right under mine. County Attorney, Robert Wilson. Oh, that. <laughs> well, we'll work together, Sheriff, and put everybody in jail. <laughs> Come on, Dan, let's go. I told that sheriff to be here at 9 o'clock. Hasn't he come yet? No, sir. Well, send the boy after him. Yes, sir. At once, Anna. Yes, sir. Mm. Oh, boy. Good morning, Jeannie. Hello, Mr. Sheriff. Where have you been? You're late. Yes, sir. I was just starting out to come here when I got a message. A man had lost a dog. Huh, a dog? Yes, Senator, and he must be quite a valuable dog because the owner's offering a very liberal reward. Of course, the reward means nothing to me, but I felt like I ought to go out and get the dog's description. He's brown with a white blaze on his face and a white bib, cuts on ear and left foreleg, weight about 60 pounds. Who is this man that's so liberal? Name's Barton. He's taken over the old Simpson barn. Oh, that fella. That's the very thing I wanted to see you about. Where are you off to, Jeannie? I, uh, I'm going for a ride. Oh, well, you be careful now, you hear? I will, Grandpa. How long is this man Barton planning to run that dog pit out there? Don't know, Senator. He's drawing quite a crowd. Riffraff. They drive back to town after it's all over, celebrating, raising Ned, keeping decent folks awake. Why, I can hear it away out here, and I won't have it. Whoa, nothing. Whoa. Dad! Dad! What do you want? You've got to take Dusty back. There's a reward. I don't want no reward. Dusty's my dog now, and I don't want no reward. Good morning, Jeannie. How do you do, Mr. Norris? Somebody owns Dusty, and I know who. Are you sure? Yes, sir. And he's offering a liberal reward. And Ted won't give him back his dog. Finders keepers, losers weepers. Ted. Yes, Dad? What's it going to be, Ted? Right or wrong? Right, Dad, but gee, I love Dusty. I know you do. But how would you feel if you'd raised him from a pup? I'd like him too much to lose him. But if he did, how would you feel? You'd feel pretty miserable, wouldn't you? How do you suppose his owner... Mr. Barton, who's offering the reward. How do you suppose Mr. Barton feels? Don't you think that he must love Dusty a great deal to offer a liberal reward for him? I guess so. 
If he were in your place and you lost Dusty, what would you want him to do? Think it over, Ted. I'll take him back. Gosh, he loves everybody around here, even Dinah. Come on, Dusty. a liberal reward is. Maybe a whole dollar. You can put your hat towards the new fishing pole. I don't want no old reward money. You don't take money for doing what's right. Dusty before he sees it. Nobody's gonna claim my dog before he can prove it's his. Dusty, you hear? Stay. I don't think there's anybody here. Maybe someone's inside. I guess we go in here. Who are those folk 
kid. What on Mr. Parsons for? You're safe now. Start at the beginning. They got a regular place out there at Simpson's old barn where they make dogs fight. And he whips them and beats them till they bleed. Dusty used to be one of the dogs. That's how he got all hurt. Son, son. It's awful, Mom. I couldn't leave Dusty there. They'd kill him. Oh, of course you couldn't. What is it, Will? Something that ought to be stopped. Emily, take the children in the house. Come with me, dear. How long has this been going on? Since Barton's been in town? I'd say about two weeks. What are you thinking of? I never thought a thing like that would hit this town. You ever seen one? Pit fight? I've heard. I, I know about them. They're pretty savage. I'm going out to Simpsons. I'm going to tell Barton that Dusty is staying here. You can't do that, Will. It's not so simple. Why? Why not? Well, Barton isn't doing anything unlawful. The dog belongs to him. Well, what would you do? Look, Will, let's go and see my uncle. I know he doesn't like dog fighting either. Maybe he can help us. He could help us, couldn't he? Dad? You aren't going to take Dusty back, are you, Dad? Don't worry, son. Dusty is going to stay right here with you. It's a disgrace. It's a disgrace to a decent community. Haven't you got anything on your books to stop it? No, sir. It's all very legal. Then there ought to be a law to make it illegal. Say, that's it. Would you really do that, Senator? Would you take it to the legislature? Why, well, certainly I will. Pit fighting only appeals to the worst element. I hear them going home, shouting, carousing, bloodthirsty brutes. Then you agree that we shouldn't take the dog back? I think this whole thing's bigger than one dog. Of course it is. Yes, as a matter of fact, it's bigger than all dogs. To get at the roots of this thing, a law should prohibit the inhuman treatment of any dumb beast. Dogs, horses. Horses take more bad treatment than any other animal. We've all seen them beaten until they fall on their shafts. Cattle and sheep and hogs. I've worked on the stock pens vacations. You ought to see the way they're handled. C crowded into cars, sick ones and well ones together. I've even seen a car ride with some dead. Yes, it would have to include them all. We'll have to set up machinery to enforce the law. Sure, official inspectors with the power to arrest. They should have the right to investigate livery stables, barns, any place, even the homes. Homes? Not so fast, Will. Why not? If a man was mistreating a dog, for instance, they'd have to have the right to go into his home. I think you found the weakness, Will. Yes, sir, we've all been carried away a little. How do you mean? Why don't you see where this would all lead? To the infringement of man's basic rights, to the invasion of his privacy. I don't see why that would be so terrible if it prevented unnecessary cruelty. Well, just imagine what would happen, man. These inspectors, these officers, these so-called servants of the people would be able indiscriminately to invade the business or the home. They'd no longer be servants. They'd be masters. Oh, it's unthinkable. I guess we'll have to put up with Barton and his kind. After all, they're in a minority. And we can't let a small thing blind us to the larger picture. I don't consider the mistreatment of a dog a small thing. You're right, it isn't. And if I were you, I'd preach that from my pulpit. It'll do a lot of good. But what about the dog? I can't let him go back to that place. Oh, yes, you can, Will. I'd return it to its legal owner just as fast as you can and try and forget it. 
You don't want to get in trouble with the law, do you? You wouldn't want Bob to have to prosecute you, would you? <laughs> Who wants to sleep with me? Dear, dear. Down, Dusty. See you in the morning. Pleasant dreams, son. Pleasant dreams to you, too. And Dad and Aunt Linda. I'll tell them. Come on, Dusty. Come on. No will. You were gone so long, dear. Hurry upstairs and tell Ted good night. He's something wrong. Dusty. I did about everything I could to save him. I guess Senator Cooper must think I'm a very radical character. Oh, will you didn't lose your head? <laughs> I told you, Parson, I just can't do it. I'll give you more than he's worth. How much? $25. Fifty. Parson, this dog's all dated to fight Saturday night. Win, lose, or draw, he'll make me $500. He won't fight. We've taught him to forget the pit. I can see that. But what you don't understand, Parson, is that this is my business. It's a matter of odds. And I can still make 500, win, lose, or draw. Good night, Parson. Good night, ma'am. Dad! Dad, he took Dusty! I know, son. You let him go. You gave him back. Better go up to him, Will. Yes. Ted. Ted. gave him back. He gave Dusty back to that man. You must try to understand what's happened, Ted. I didn't give Dusty back. I had no choice. He belongs to that man. He's his property. You know what he does to Dusty? And you gave him back. But Dusty wasn't ours to keep, son. I tried to find a way to keep him, but there was no way. He'll make Dusty go into that place. Now, Ted, you've got to forget that place. Don't think of it. We had Dusty safe, but you sent him back there. There was nothing I could do, Ted. Nothing anyone could do. You must understand that the law... You said it was wrong, but you gave him back. I know you're a little upset, but... You knew, and you gave him back.
couldn't talk to him. Maybe I can explain. Something you can't explain. Not to a boy we've taught to know only the difference between right and wrong. He's hurt now, but he'll forget about Dusty. He's lost dogs before. The thing that's hurting Ted is not that he's lost Dusty. He thinks he's lost his father. This is the night they're going to make Dusty fight. Good night to your father. Try to understand. It isn't your father's fault. Now, you know how he loves animals. He feels very bad about giving Dusty back, just as bad as you do. The longer you put it off, the harder it's going to be for both of you. All right, Em.
Okay, Charlie. Well, Sam. Yeah? Let the killer and the slasher get together before we put them in the pit. All right, boss. could any dog have opened that by himself? I tell you, Sheriff, he didn't run away. He was stolen. He ran away once before. Yes, and I'll lay you out. You'll find the same place this time. I want the North place searched. I don't care whether he's a parson or not. He stole a slasher, and I know it. Now, just a minute, Mr. Barton. Uncle Fred! Yes, what is it? Uncle Fred, the parson's been looking all over for you. When I told him where you were, he said for me to give you this note. Lady's plan. What is it, Uncle Fred? Uh, you get along back home, son. Run along. Well, you're right. The parson says he has your dog. Mean to say he admits he stole it? Certainly he admits it. He's an honest man. You figure he's hit good enough, Dad? <laughs> Think he'll be safe? He'll be fine. And when we come back for him, he'll be safe for good. Be sure you always take the back road when you bring his food. It's longer, but no one from Simpson's barn can see you. I will, Dad. Well, we'd better be on our way. I expect by now the sheriff is looking for me. Dad! I'm scared. I'm afraid they'll put you in jail. Now, Ted, I'm only facing a fair trial, and we're not afraid of that, are we? Are we? No, Dad. When you're right, you have nothing to fear. Remember that. And we're right because we're trying to save a life, perhaps many lives. You hold on to that thought tight, because that's what's going to make us win. Isn't that so? Yes, Dad. That's my boy. <laughs> we'll face this thing together. Come on. In you go. Dustin, you can't go. Here we go. Hi, Dusty. Sam said Will Norris has been arrested. That's what I hear. Fred Akeley arrest the parson. He didn't want to. Seems like Will came in and insisted Fred charge him with stealing Kit Barton's fighting dog. Man, you're crazy. The Parson's the one who's crazy. He's got one of my dogs hidden somewhere. He admits it. Claims he'll go to trial before he'll give it back. 
Why, it's just downright plain larceny. That's what it is. Will? Will? What is this? I expect it depends which side of the court you're going to stand on, Bob. He calls it larceny, and I guess you'll have to, too. But I call it mercy, and I think I'll be able to convince you, the court, and everyone that I'm right. All right, honey. Come on inside, Fred. Goodness, Emily, I don't know when I'm going to get my preserving done this season. It just seems like one thing after another. Have you put up your fruit yet, Emily? Well, no, Sue. I'm afraid these last few days have been so... Yes, of course. My, it's a good thing we'll get this quilt finished before the cold weather sets in. The Petersons will certainly need it. Can't her husband find work? That way, Stroll? He's where he belongs, in jail. Would you excuse me a moment? When you simply must do something. What is it, Emily? Well, dear, none of the women in town have spoken to me of anything but jams and jellies since you were arrested. You see, they like you too much to gossip about you. But they like to gossip almost as much as they like you. I'm afraid the, the strain may cause them all to explode. I'll come and see what I can do. Good evening, ladies. Good evening, Will. Oh, sandwiches. How lovely. Oh, how wonderful. Oh, what do you think? I don't know which to take. Yes, Tom. Jeez. You shouldn't have gone to all that trouble. Good evening. Well, Good evening. Bob. Good evening. Senator. Well. Fred. Come in. Oh, well. Good evening, Good evening, Mrs. Norris. Good evening. Ladies. Senator. Uh, Will. We want to talk to you about tomorrow. I think that'll be a relief to all of us. Well, we've come to ask you to give back the dog and let me dismiss the charges. Otherwise, you can't shirk your responsibility to try and convict me. I can't shirk mine to fight. But you haven't even got a lawyer. I consulted one. <laughs> he didn't think I had much of a case. You see? I think I have, Senator. I must have. I'm going to prove that not only humans have a right of protection against cruelty, but every living creature has an equal God-given right. This man Barton is the guilty one. Guilty of inhuman mistreatment of a defenseless creature that cannot... I object. What? I object on the grounds that the defendant's statement is incompetent, irrelevant, and immaterial. What? I'm afraid I don't understand. Objection sustained. The prosecuting attorney is quite right. What you are trying to say has no bearing whatever on the case, Mr. Norris. Just a moment, gentlemen. We're not in court yet. We'll be tomorrow. We know you don't understand court procedure, Will. That's why we're here, to ask you to step back while there's still time. Tomorrow, when you face a judge, sitting behind the bar of justice, and a jury, all sworn to uphold the strict letter of the law, and equally bound to disregard their personal feelings. Their admiration for you as a man, as their pastor. They cannot allow anything but cold, impartial facts to sway them in any way. That's right. They'll have to reach a verdict solely on the merits of the case, which is, I hate to say this, Will, a plain case of theft. I must lay the foundation of the state's case on those grounds alone when I address the jury. This is a very simple case. A man owns a dog, and another man stole that dog. The state intends to prove these facts quickly, briefly, and conclusively. The defense is confident the state can prove that I took the dog since I admit it. The defense is equally confident of winning when the jury is told why. You see, I have just as great faith in justice as you have, Bob. Possibly greater. But motives have nothing to do with it. That's what we want you to understand. And I think perhaps you will, if the state will proceed. I suggest you call a complaining witness, Mr. Prosecutor. The state calls Kit Barton. Barton? Wait a minute. I don't want to be Barton. I don't like the fellow. 
answer the prosecutor's questions. You may dispense with the preliminaries. Do you own a dog called the Slasher? Yes. He is a valuable dog? Worth 500. Leastways, that's what Barton said. Was this dog stolen from you? Yes. Who stole it? The parson. And did he refuse to return him? Yes. And did you offer to drop all charges if he would return the dog? Yes. And Mr. Norris still refused? Yes. That's all, Mr. Barton. Your witness. Bob here, I mean the prosecutor, said this is a very simple case. It is. A man was mistreating a dog. Another man, to prevent it, took the dog away. Objection, Your Honor. The defendant's remarks are irrelevant and immaterial. Does he or does he not wish to question the witness? Objection sustained. The jury will disregard the defendant's remarks and they will be stricken from the record. You will at this time confine yourself to cross-examination of the witness. Mr. Barton, what do you do for a living? I operate a dog pit out of Simpson's barn. And uh, how do you train your dogs to fight? Objection. Sustained. You're on trial here, not Mr. Barton or dog fighting. You may continue. No more questions. That's all for you, Sheriff. The state calls the defendant. Dispense with the oath. I think we can trust Mr. Norris to tell the truth. On the night of June 12th, did you take this dog called the Slasher from Simpson's barn? Yes, I did. You see... Did you remove the dog surreptitiously? Which is to say, did you steal the dog? Well, steal isn't quite the right word. Objection. Sustained. The witness will confine himself to direct answers. You admit you took the dog? Yes. Did you have permission of the owner to take the dog? How could I get the permission of the owner? After all, objection. Sustain. Do you have the dog in your possession now? Well, I... Yes. And have you refused to return the dog to its rightful owner? Now, just a moment. Please answer yes or no. Have you refused to return the dog? Yes, but there's a little more to it than that. If I return the dog to Barton... Objection. Sustain. If you'd stop your objecting, he might have a chance to tell what's really the truth. Now, you stay out of this, young lady. Will, be sensible. Admit when you're defeated. I understand your feeling in the matter. I wonder if you do. I wonder if any of you understand my feelings. Or those of my boy. I have to stop that dog, any dog, any animal from being tortured, just as much as I would if it were a child that I saw being unmercifully beaten. Will, we're not talking about children. We're only talking about a little brutality to a dumb beast. I don't think there's any such thing. And for being reminded of that truth, I'm indebted to our son. He'll tell you. Any child will tell you about dogs, and he won't call them dumb beasts, because he knows they can talk, too. I used to have one called Dusty. When Ted came along, Dusty was getting on in years, but he deserted me for our boy because I'd forgotten how to talk to him. But Ted just naturally knew how, even before he learned to say words with his mouth. A boy only has to look into the eyes of a dog to carry on the lengthiest conversation you ever heard. That's why old Dusty deserted me. He wanted someone to talk to. Know what Ted called this new dog when he came to us asking help? Dusty, of course. Yes, they'd sit for hours looking at each other, talking in a language only understood by boy and dog. And in no time at all, the ferocious slasher, the pride of the bloodthirsty, became the meek the mild, the beloved, lovable Dusty. Yes, a grown dog is just about as old as a boy of any age. They like to do the same things. They think alike. And I'll protect them from a little brutality, Senator, even though there is no such thing. There's either brutality or there's none. Not a little. Just as there is either justice or none. When I was studying for the ministry, I learned something that I forgot for a while. But our boy, with his true instinct for right and wrong, brought it back to me. And I hope that I shall never forget it again. Justice, Thomas Aquinas said, is a certain rectitude of the mind whereby a man does what he ought to do in the circumstances confronting him. I'm confronted with a circumstance of brutality. 
And I'm doing what I ought to do. Tomorrow in court, I shall be asked to swear on the Bible to tell the truth. That will be easy because I swear on the Bible all the time. Swear, that's just another word for promise. And a long time ago, I promised to live by its teachings, to spread the gospel of brotherly love, of humility, of kindness, of mercy. And I'll go on spreading them in this parish, in the church, in the dog pit, in the court, in the jail, or wherever I may be, so long as God in his infinite wisdom spares me this life. The court must instruct the jury to ignore these remarks of the defendant, which will be stricken from the record, and to disregard all sentiment or personal feelings. You will adjudge the guilt or innocence of the defendant solely on the basis of admissible evidence. In the light of the facts introduced by the state and by the defendant's own admission, there can be no reasonable doubt that an act of theft has been committed. You must find the defendant guilty as charged. nicest parish we've ever had. It's been such a wonderful place to bring up our boy. There's been so much peace and happiness here for us all. It was in that Sunday school I first decided to become a preacher. I never thought that someday I'd have the church. And become the finest preacher it's ever had. Oh. You are, Will. Because you never once compromised with your principles. I've been overconfident. I haven't thought of you and Ted. You've thought of us in the way that counts, Will. If you do go to jail, folks all over the country will ask why. And that will mean they're thinking of their children, as you thought of Ted, of protecting them from exposure to the sickness of cruelty. And when they think, they act. What will you do with me away? You've already provided for Ted and me. By helping to make this a town that's so filled with friendship and generosity and kindness that we could never want for anything. I've always said that a man who blunders along, banging his head against ideals he's not quite sure of, and then, with a simple word, a woman heals the hurt and makes everything worthwhile. You know very well, no matter what I said, you were going through with the trial anyway. Because in losing, you will really win. Win perhaps much more than you dare hope. Chores.
I gotta give you back, Dusty. I just gotta. We don't want Dad to go to jail on account of us. You know why I'm taking you back, don't you, Dusty? I'd like to know versus our pastor. Just show me one of them. You ever said a darn thing, ma'am? We'd better go in, girls. It'll be starting pretty soon. I'm for him, Sheriff. But down at all, how does he explain what he's doing? Come inside and you'll find out. And you'll find out he's right, too. Sonny. Hey, Sharon. You can call the whole thing off. I got what I want. Holy mackerel. That means Will's free.
disobeyed me. But, Dad, I didn't want you to go to jail. Sorry I talked to you the way I did, son. I guess I lost my balance yesterday. I know that what you did was because, well, because you love your foolish father, and I'm grateful for it. Will you forgive me? You're a good boy, and a brave one. Uh, Will, Will, come with me. What? Hurry. Just come. Mr. Norris, these good people here have asked me to prepare this petition, which, as you can see, takes several pages. It's to the governor of the state. Now, I'm not going to read it all to you because, as I remember, you're not very fond of legal procedure. However, with all the fancy words eliminated, it requests His Excellency to take such action as necessary to make it unlawful, to treat any dumb animal or creature in a cruel or inhuman manner, and specifically to prohibit forever the amateur or professional practice of dog fighting, more commonly known as pit fighting. This petition has been signed by all of us, and we'd like to have your signature at the top of the list. Preacher is supposed to be able to talk, but... Thank you. Thank you all. luckiest man in the world, and the happiest, and I'm thankful to the good Lord. Yeah. 